Welcome back Gundam guys and Gundam gals, Patrick Grade here from ggnfinitenews.com This time I'm bringing you the third and final part of the video review for the Master Grade Gundam Sandrock. So at the end of the last video we had just taken a look at the machine gun and shield combination. So now let's take a look at the swords and the cross cutter. As well as go over some final thoughts on the kit and my overall opinion. Oh, and one thing I forgot to look at in the previous video is the possibility of the swords on the backpack. So I had said before, they just kind of hide behind the front when they're in the normal position. But I failed to mention that uh, these arms could swivel around and move up and down to give them a little more variety as far as how they look on the back. So I was wrong in saying it looks kind of plain from the front. And here is just a quick example of why. So just like on the machine gun, the sword handles have the long narrow peg along the edge of the handle and it fits into the slot on the particular fixed posed hand here. So just like having the machine gun in hand, the sword stay in place pretty well. Although this is a little bit easier to tip over and uh, kind of knock out of place I guess. So it does have the tendency to come loose with a little too much movement, especially the tip, you know, the, the counterbalance there just kind of pulls it out of place. So just be aware of that. But overall, the connection is really secure, and probably more so than having the normal swivel fingers from a standard master grade hand. And here we go with both swords in hand. A very nice uh, side profile holding onto these guys in a, in a normal position. And you can see the swords can even be held, or the left hand sword can even be held with the shield in place. It doesn't interact with the shield too much, so there's no chance of it being knocked off or anything. So that's always a nice touch. So like I had said before, the swords are really light, and here's proof that you can have the shoulders and arms extended all the way out as far as possible with little to no effect on the uh, joint position. And for an added posing situation, you can even reverse the angle of the blade, putting it in storage mode, and you can hold on to that way as well. Kind of like a behind the back kind of pose, which I think is pretty cool. And here's a quick peek at having both swords connected at the handle. You get a way oversized dual ended weapon this way, and it looks really nice. It's always kind of cumbersome to pose these extra long weapons like this, especially if you're not going to keep it on a, an action base. And with both swords attached, the weight does become a little bit more than the joint can handle in some positions. But it's not, it's not too bad. So this is a really versatile weapon, and, it's, and it holds together well with the manipulators and with the, you know, connecting both together. So also in combined mode, you can flip one of the swords around into the opposite position to get a unique uh, shape there for blades. May look a little silly to some, but I think it's kind of neat. So the last combination to go over is the cross cutter, and that involves the shield and both of the swords. So to start out, you want to change the position of the arm attachment point on the back of the shield. Just pull out a place and peg it into where it's sticking out further. And that way it gives us more clearance between the arm and the shield for the swords to uh, rest in place. So the next step is to take one of the swords and make sure the handle is folded down. And just place this over the, the little notch here. Now this is, this is one weak point of the kit overall. On mine at least, this attachment doesn't work out very well. There's no peg going into there. It's just a friction kind of deal. So it doesn't grasp very well. I put some top coat on mine just to help it out a little bit. And it does help some, but a couple more layers might be necessary to make it entirely efficient. But this just may be an oddity of my own kit, so I don't know how prevalent this is for most of the kits. It would make it, it would have made a lot more sense if they would actually put a a peg into place for this hole 
but that would have gotten away of the the handle here but aside from the connection issue you, you you get a really nice effect here of having a crazy snake head for a shield and these guys move in tandem with each other so you move one you move them both so that way you have a, a, a symmetrical pose so you can close it all the way down or open it all the way up if you want to and I think mine are just kind of wonky. They don't line up very well. Or stay in place very well. These should be parallel with one another. But for whatever reason, they're kind of off balance. And also, you can reverse the connection of the swords and the shield to create a, a reverse cross-cutter kind of deal. I don't know how practical that is or if it even makes sense. but uh, it's still an option you have. All right, so as the Gundam Sandrock spins around here in a couple different poses, let's go over the few negatives and many positives of this kit. And as far as ne negatives go, there isn't much that would make the Sandrock a bad purchase. Just a few minor annoyances here and there. Uh, like on mine, the, I have the loose claw thing on the shield. It doesn't stay in place very well. And the connection point for the cross cutter here on the shield, the two little tabs, they don't stay in place very well. But maybe that's just mine, a defect of mine. I haven't heard too much about it otherwise. And they can be fixed too, so there's not like it's a make or break kind of thing for the, the kit or the functionality. And also, you know, the lower price, I guess, is a negative. And I don't mean it's really a bad thing. But with all the wing kits being between 3,800 and 4,500 yen, you tend to lose some more of the advanced features that really make a, a master grade stand out. And while the Sandrock is a very solid kit, there really isn't much there to set it apart from other master grades out there. No ab crunch or crazy articulation, no multi-segmented tail-like weapon, no transformation, thankfully, and not a, no multitude of weapons. All you get is a very nice looking and well-functioning kit for a very reasonable price. And again, that's not really necessarily a bad thing, but since we only get, you know, roughly five brand new master grades a year, uh, with a, you know, with a real grade line out, uh, we get around 10 Master Grade releases a year, and five of those usually are completely unique. Should Bandai focus more on making each release more affordable, or should they focus on make, making each of those new releases totally exciting, you know, with a lot of weapons or very, you know, fancy stuff going on? I don't know. Maybe if the Sandrock gets a variation, we'll see a much more loaded version, like the Armadillo armor or something along those lines. That adds, a lot of pr uh, that adds a lot of plastic and unique details to the kit. So of course having a lower price kit is not a bad thing. It's just that we lose out on some of the the bigger details that Master Grades are famous for. But all in all, it's you know it's not really a negative. It's just a a talking point about Master Grades in general, I guess. So far as positives, again, price it, it's nice and cheap, so it's it's easy for somebody who's new to the Master Grade line or a big fan of Wing to get into. And that may be confusing with the the negative I just gave, but the price is also a, a good point. Uh, the swords, the shoulders, or however you pronounce there, pronounce them, they're extremely simple and they work really well. Uh, there's several different ways to pose them, several different ways to attach it to the kit, and you know you get two different versions for the blades: the activated and the standard silver color. And the the design is overall very simple and, and very functional. And the color separation is great, and while I'm not a big fan of the yellow, if I wanted to paint the kit and add my own flair to it, it'd be a lot easier to get some nice color separation uh, other than having to mask off all the yellow or whatever. So having these little unique pieces, unique the yellow pieces all over, make it real easy to paint it up nice if I wanted to in a different color scheme. And there's some nice visual elements as well. The shoulders, the way the swords look off on the back, um, the head, all these kind of things are, they help differentiate this kit from others, from other designs at least. So all in all, the Gundam Sandrock is a great kit to get for several different categories of Gunpla modelers. Uh, you know, those who are Win Gundam Wing fans, of course it, it falls in line great with the rest of the releases so far. And those either who are new to the Master Grade line or are looking for a good value, this is a great way to start off in the Master Grade line. It's a pretty simple build, the price is low. You know, so it's it's a great entry-level master grade kit. 
And if you know, if you collect all the Magic releases, this is a nice cheap kit. You know, we had the double O variation last month or two months ago, whenever it was. That was around seventy-five, eighty dollars. And you know, month to month, it gets kind of expensive buying all the Magic Grid kits. So this is a good break from uh, from the higher price kits. So unless you really don't like Gundam Wing or the design of the Sandrock, or you just don't have the time, there's really no good reason not to get this kit. It looks, you know, good along with other Master Grades. There's nothing, no big hindrances or negative selling points or anything. So I think it's a great kit to get for anybody interested in a new Master Grade. So I hope you've liked the review. I know it took me a little bit extra time to get the last part of the video out. I apologize for that. So let me know with a comment or rating what you like or don't like about the video review. Uh, tell me what I can do better next time. And just give me some suggestions if you want or critiques on how to make my videos better. So I appreciate uh, your time and uh, see you soon for more reviews of Master Grade and Real Grade and High Grade. So see you soon. Bye-bye.